this video, we're going to talk about measuring noise. And when I talk about noise, I'm talking about the analog noise of the oscilloscope itself, not the actual audible noise of the oscilloscope. This is something that has typically been focused on for higher end oscilloscopes, but um, for all RNS oscilloscopes, we've really focused on bringing the noise level down. And so having as small a noise as possible, particularly on the lower volt per division settings. And um, so I wanted to show you how to properly measure noise if you want to compare noise between different models and how to measure it on the RTM 3000. So one of the first things that you want to do is um, I typically recommend going to a small volt per division setting. And so we'll go down to um, the smallest volt per division setting on the um, RTM 3000 is actually 500 microvolts per division. Um, that's lower than most oscilloscopes can do. Uh, most oscilloscopes can do one millivolt per division. So we'll set it to one millivolt per division. And one of the first things that you'll notice is the noise visually is actually pretty small. Um, as you go to these smaller volt per division settings, one of the things you might notice on other scopes is they'll take up several divisions worth of um, display with the actual analog noise of the oscilloscope. Um, now, I will say in general, looking at something like, and that would be the equivalent of volt volts peak to peak, that's not the correct way to, to measure noise. And so what you usually want to do is you want to measure noise um, as RMS. And so to do that, we're going to do a couple things. First, most people look at it on the 50 ohm path. So we'll go ahead and change to 50 ohms. Um, you'll also want to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. So noise is directly related to the amount of bandwidth. For this oscilloscope, I have a gigahertz of bandwidth. So if you're looking at um, other oscilloscopes, you'll want to make sure that you have a similar um, amount of bandwidth for an apples to apples compare. Once we've set 50 mega ohms, uh, 50 mega ohm input, we've changed it to one millivolt per division. We'll go ahead and turn on a measurement. And um, for the measurement, typically what you're going to want to do is use something like um, standard deviation or ACRMS, those types of um, measurements to get the uh, correct um, noise measurement. And I'll go ahead and turn the statistics on. And as you can see for this at a millivolt per division, um, at one gigahertz of bandwidth, on average, we're about 107 microvolts, which is a uh, very good noise floor for an oscilloscope. Um, it's also very important to mention that some oscilloscopes will bandwidth limit um, on those smaller volt per division settings because they do take up so much of the graticule with noise. Um, on all of our oscilloscopes, we offer full bandwidth down to the smallest volt per division setting. Um, so even on uh, the RTM 3000 all the way down to 500 microvolts per division, um, or in this case, the one millivolt per division that we're at. And finally, one last thing to mention. So if you do want to see the effect of bandwidth on the amount of noise, I'll come in and I'll go ahead and change this 20 megahertz filter on. And um, you can see now with that turned on, uh, the noise dropped considerably. So we're down to, on average, about 27 microvolts. And Almost every scope has a 20 megahertz uh, filter, so you can use that if you want to compare front end noise at a very small uh, amount of bandwidth. Um, some other scopes, for example, these do give the ability to um, bandwidth limit to 500 megahertz or 350 megahertz or 200 megahertz, 100 megahertz, that type of thing. Um, but not all scopes give you that ability, so it might be difficult to, uh, to get that apples to apples compare um, with other scopes. 